Sarah? Hi, Dan. Thanks so much for having me. It's our pleasure. Thank you. So, Sarah, am I, am, am I off base when I say you guys are involved in helping the city of Chicago send feral cats into sewer streets, wherever, to try to control the rat problem? Am I accurate on that? You are pretty accurate on that. So it's not quite as dramatic as it sounds. So we didn't release 1,000 cats, and we're not just getting them and releasing them randomly into the streets of Chicago either. So the way our program actually works is we're, we're very focused on trap, neuter, and return for feral cats, which are, which are cats who are unsocialized to people. So they don't really do well indoors. Um, the best life for them is outside. And occasionally um, in these situations, they cannot return back to the place in person that was originally caring for them. And so in these cases, we will relocate them to a new place. And typically um, that new person that they're working with has a rodent issue. And we are working with them to help curb that with these cats who are kind of in need of a second chance somewhere new. So uh, with that, Sarah, thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> Let's back Absolutely. up. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, so, Sarah, I have my own Chicago rat story. Uh, my wife and yes. I came down to Chicago a couple of years back, and we ate at a wonderful restaurant in downtown. We were so uh, full that we decided to walk around <laughs> the block. Well, you know, yeah. walking around the block in Chicago is a lot different than walking around the block in Fargo. Uh, I can imagine. <laughs> it was a, I should have packed a lunch. Uh, so we went for this big walk, and we're behind this huge building. And we see something running across the street. My wife initially thought it was a little kitty. And I said, no, oh that's not a kitty. Uh, and it was a rat. And it went, and I was like, wow, it was a huge rat. And it went into the side wow. of this building and down into the chute. It had its own you know, entrance and exit. So I actually did see yeah. a rat the, the time I was in Chicago. So oh it, it, is there a rat problem in Chicago? There is a rat problem in Chicago, yes. So Orkin has actually, um, they rank cities every year based on their rat problem, and we have been ranked consistently um, the rattiest city in America for the last six years, actually. It's a lovely title to hold. <laughs> so Chicago is the rattiest city. Fargo got voted yes. the drunkest city in America. Oh, not, interesting. Yeah, not too long ago. I don't know if those two things go together. So, 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 so Chicago got a, a rat problem now take it from there let's go back and how did yes. they approach you how did this start yeah that's a great question so um we started um we had a, a program developed in at treehouse um back in 2007 where we started this trap neuter and return for feral cats um and what happened was um within that like five years so we started cats at work in 2012 and so within that five years we started to notice that when we were returning cats back to these areas where they were originally from we were neutering them stabilizing the population in that area we noticed that people were experiencing a decrease in the rodent population um, where these cats were stable and staying and living going forward and so we thought, hey, we have this other population of cats from time to time where we cannot place them back where they originally came from for some reason or another. So sometimes it's a demolition is happening um, on that block or, you know, there's some kind of threat to those cats' existence in their original territory. For some reason or another, they can't return. And so we thought, hey, why don't we find other places for these cats to go, give them a second chance to continue living their lives outside as they've always lived um, and, you know, at the same time help people who are having rodent issues so people who have these terrible rodent issues they're tend to be cat lovers as well usually they're not interested in taking on the cats unless they also love them um so they reach out to us they say hey i have a rodent problem let me take on some of those cats that you're that you're needing to find placement for so sarah liss is joining us today <clears throat> she's community cats program manager at treehouse humane society in chicago and there is a program where they are helping get feral cats into parts of the city uh, that generally have a rat problem, and it's turning out that these feral cats are having a big impact on the rat population in Chicago. Sarah, is the city involved in this at all? They're not actually. They're not. So we're a separate. We're a separate uh, program completely from the city. So the city is doing their own work um, to try to work on the rat issue, um, but it doesn't involve feral cats. Okay. So, Sarah, how does this work? Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Dan, and I live, uh, you know, on uh, 48th Street North in Chicago, and I have, mm -hmm. I need some cats up there. I have a rodent problem up there. Uh, what would you do to help me? 
Yeah, great question. So we have you fill out a bunch of questions. We just want to make sure that your property is a good place to place feral cats. So we want to make sure you have a quiet location on your property that allows these cats to get adjusted to the new territory, um, get bonded to their new caregiver, and that way when they get um, released from this acclimation space, they're feeling comfortable in that new territory. We want to make sure there's not a lot of dogs running around in your area. Um, there's not a lot of busy streets nearby or anything like that. Um, and so our goal there is to make sure that we're finding the best placement possible for these cats. So once you filled out our application, we see that you, you have a place that sounds like it could work. We come, we do a site visit, we walk around the property with you and kind of help you understand um, what your rodent issue looks like. We talk to you more about the responsibilities of taking care of feral cats because of course, you know, they're just, they, they may not be like indoor cats in terms of their behavior, but they are like indoor cats in that they need to be fed, you know, they need to be taken care of medically. Um, and so there are a lot of responsibilities that come with having these cats. And then from there, um, we have you hang out on a waiting list for a little bit until the right colony comes our way that needs to be relocated for that property. And um, then we start that process with you. The cats acclimate um, in a series of dog crates that we put together to make a nice, cozy, quiet enclosure for them. And they hang out there for three weeks, getting used to their new caregiver. The site sounds small to their new area. And then from there, they get released, and they just basically live out the rest of their lives. And their their presence is actually enough to deter the rodents from that area. That's amazing. You know, you're using yeah. <laughs> you're using nature as it's almost intended to to get yeah. this get this job done. So, Sarah, has the city expressed any interest in working with you? You would if this program. What you're telling me, what it sounds like to my ears, Sarah, is that this is kind of like a a really good pilot program that works in smaller areas it seems like only yeah. a natural to take this to expand it yeah yeah absolutely so um, we would love to talk to you know other cities who are interested in trying the same thing there's usually feral cats everywhere who sometimes need a place to go um, but in the city of Chicago um, you know we're actually we're very like I said we're very focused on on that trap neuter return component of community cats making sure that those cats are all neutered and stayed and in every case possible returning them back to where they came from because that's where they're most likely to thrive but um, so we don't we have a finite number of cats that we're working with so while we would love to expand we always want to make sure that we're focusing on those cats that truly cannot go back to where they came from so that way you know everybody's thriving to the best of their ability so Sarah <laughs> where do you suppose this big dramatic story came from that chicago's <laughs> releasing a thousand cats into the sewers to kill all the rest where'd that come from that is such a great question we did uh, we did a local news story and it featured a couple of the cats that we we have in our program and somehow that i think maybe like a game of telephone situation uh. kind of going on <laughs> somehow that got quoted <laughs> To another story that made it sound like we were releasing 1,000 cats at one time. Um, and like I said, not maybe not quite that dramatic, <laughs> but it made for an interesting story for sure. And then, it, yeah, it kind of just took off from there. And so it's a great opportunity for us to explain what we are doing, though, and, and to kind of just get the word out there about how trap neuter return is important and how there are ways to find, you know, loving, excellent homes for cats who even don't have a place to go like these feral cats that we're working with. And if they kill their natural enemy like rats in a place that's been voted, you know, the rattiest uh, over the years, I think this is something that could just continue to go and grow. Okay, before we get out of here, yeah. Sarah, I want you to please tell everybody about Treehouse Humane Society and your mission. Yes, fantastic. So Treehouse Humane Society has been around since 1971. Um, we are truly an awesome organization, if I do say so myself. Uh, we are always working to find innovative ways to help cats thrive in any situation that they're in. So our goal here is to always look at the individual cat, make sure that they are in the best place possible for them, whether that's a home environment, whether that's back outside with a colony caregiver um, who's taking care of them, or whether it's with a new colony caregiver because they don't have a place to return to. So we're also lucky enough to have just opened our very own veterinary wellness center which is a low-cost bay neuter clinic, so that way we can serve even more people and more animals. Um, it's a really, really great, very cat-focused shelter, and, and we're very, very thankful for all we're able to do. And you guys are celebrating your 50th anniversary this year. Yes, we are. We are. Is uh, how, do, how can people help Treehouse Humane Society? How do you stay in business? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, we can always use volunteers. Um, they're always a huge, huge help to us in any of our departments. Um, and donations are always a huge help as well. Um, we can, can donate on our website, and we also have several events if you are local um, to the city of Chicago or you just happen to find yourself in Chicago and you're looking for a cat-friendly event. We do a few every year. Um, so all of those are wonderful ways to support us. Sarah Liss is the Community Cats Program Manager at Treehouse Humane Society in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, you can find them. They're very easy to find. By the way, it's treehouseanimals.org, treehouseanimals.org, if you'd like to reach out and see what they do. Maybe you want to help them a little bit as well. Sarah, what a treat to get to talk to you and to get to the bottom oh. of this fantastic <laughs> story. Are you going to keep just going to keep doing this on Thank a case-by-case case ba- uh, basis as time goes on? Exactly, exactly. That is what we're completely looking to do. Help as many feral cats as we can. You guys are probably setting the template for how this will be done in other places, so hats off to you. That is our hope. That's absolutely our hope. Thank you so much, Dan. Really appreciate it. Well, it's a thrill for me, Sarah, and I can't wait to come back to Sweet Home (laughs) Chicago sometime soon, too. Sarah, come visit us if you do. I, I will be there. Will you let me, you know, play with the cats? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, boy, I'm there. (laughs) Sarah Liss, Community Cats Program Manager at Treehouse Humane Society in Chicago. Sarah, thanks so very much. You have a wonderful evening there in Chicago. Thank you, Dan. You too. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. KFG Time coming up on 424. You're listening to The Drive with Dan Michaels on the Mighty 790 and 1047 KFGO. You're listening to The Drive with Dan Michaels. I guess I was going about 65 tops. Seven. Seven miles an hour. On the mighty 790 and 104.7 KFGO. Peterson's Farm Seed and Butler Machinery welcome you to Breakfast on the Farm on Saturday, June 5th at Cason Farms from 7 to noon. Cason's is located three and a quarter miles south of Hawley on County Highway 31. Come and enjoy a farm country breakfast prepared by the Hawley Area Alliance for a free will donation. Enjoy the farm animal zoo, live music, door prizes, and barrel train rides for the kids. See you at Cason Farms on Saturday, June June 5th, Breakfast on the Farm is sponsored by Titan Machinery, Clay Wilkins Soybean and Corn Growers, and Agassiz Valley Grain. Doosan Bobcat, an equal opportunity employer, is conducting on-site interviews June 2nd, 1230 till 6 p.m. at their Wapaton facility for second shift CNC machinists. These positions start at $24 per hour and are eligible for a $2,000 sign-on bonus, weekly commuter incentives, and a $5,000 relocation package after the probationary right. period. Interview in Wapaton June 2nd, 1230 till 6 p.m. or apply online at bobcat.com forward slash now hiring it's a great way to spend a summer evening the fargo police community picnic wednesday june 16th from five to eight at a new location urban plains park this is an evening of fun for the entire family free treats from old dutch chips and cast clay creamery enjoy music food vendors booths and demonstrations plus games from games galore and activities for the kids free caricature sponsored by xl energy meet the people who protect and serve our community at the fargo police community picnic june 16th at urban plains park next to the Shields Arena. All tobacco and e-cigarettes are dangerous and can ruin your life with lung disease and cancer. Quitting is hard, but the good news is you can do it. There are many ways to quit, and ND Quits can 